sibling, I don't know why, but they're glad to see all of you. So prior to that, whatever the Jaina said, could you please translate it? What, what? Oh, it's today is your birthday. Two days ago. Two days ago. I know all of you are excited, I didn't know what. So I'm sorry, I'm a little bit curious to know why all of you are very excited. So I just want to inquire. So the sibling, Edgar, you may have a few minutes to get this part. The sibling, I want to start with you from this particular passage, possessing genuine faith. You know, it is important. All of us possess faith. But the word of God, James is saying, what's a genuine faith? Faith that is supported by our deeds, not just expressed in words. You know, that is what he is talking about here. You and I know faith is a key doctrine of the scripture. The scripture says, you and I as sinners are saved by faith. And then if you read the second Corinthians 5, it says, believers must walk by faith. And if you read the Hebrews 11, 6, it says without impossible. You know, it is impossible to please God without faith. And then Romans 14, 23, it says, whatever you do apart from faith, it is sin. So as Christians, for us, faith is such a central doctrine for all of us. And, and so, it is important that the faith that we possess is genuine. And, and, and that is the talk and that is the emphasis it's coming here, particularly now, as you and I are going to enter into Lenten season. For us, Lenten season is not a tradition. It is not uh, something that we follow meaninglessly, but Lenten gives us an opportunity to look at ourselves and our relationship with God, where we stand. You know, so here, when it comes to faith, it is very, very important for us to ask ourselves where we stand. You know, sometimes you and I, as human beings, we might think that, okay, I, I have faith and that's good enough. But here, James says, possess and make sure that your faith is genuine. And uh, if you read this particular passage, thank you, brother, for reading it beautifully. And, and if you read James chapter 2, verses 14 to 17, he is saying that faith that we be declared, but we are not demonstrating, that cannot be a saving thing. Sometimes you and I declare our faith in words. But faith is not meant to be declared only in words. It has to be demonstrated in our day-to-day -day life. It is very, very important. That is why he is saying that. You are saying you have faith, then show it by your deeds. Because otherwise there is no point in saying that I have faith. And my faith is very strong. What we do to do, then show it by your actions. You know, don't just simply say it in words. You know, that is the challenge that comes to all the Christians. So, faith that is declared, but it is not demonstrated, can never be a saving thing. That is the first lesson that you and I must learn. Because when you say faith, it is not understanding certain uh, spiritual truths for our knowledge sake. No, it, it is not that way. As, as somebody said, Faith is not believing in spite of evidence. Faith is obeying in spite of consequences. You know, faith is that no matter. Now you and I are fortunate, blessed people. We can express our faith openly. But there are countries you cannot openly say you are a Christian, and then you will pay the consequences. But at that point of time, you know, in case if you and I are in that kind of situation will be bold enough to declare that I am a Christian in spite of the consequences that we might face. You know, that is something that you and I must ask. And sometimes you and I can defend our faith theologically. We know a lot of scripture verses because we meet Christians, we meet coming to the church. So you and I know a lot of verses so you can put these verses together, you can defend. 
So more than declaration, more than defending our, our faith, demonstrating our faith is very, very important. Only then it can be a saving thing. And that is why in verses 15 and 16, he's saying if a brother or a sister is naked and destitute daily food, and one of you says, to depart in peace, be warm and well fed. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, you move on. You know, and imagine, that's what he says, but you don't give them the things which are needed for their body. So what does it profit? What does it profit, he says? See, you and I will come across a lot of people, may not be in this country, but in our own country, we in Philippines and in India. We have a lot of people who are, whom we come across, uh, even at the signals, and I, I don't know about much about the country. But if you come to my country, at every signal, people will pay. And then you come across a lot of people. And imagine if one of you says, I'm hungry, can you please give me something? Of course, there may be many people who would be cheating, but there are genuinely people who are in need. One such person comes and says that, I'm hungry, I don't have anything to eat. And, and, and you go and say that, be warm, well fed, and I pray for you, hallelujah. And, and, and if you say, if you move, James is asking, what does it profit? You know, so it's not useful in any way. So that is why most of the time we escape by saying, I'll pray for you, brother. You know, that is the best way. When you and I uh, don't want to meet the need, what we say? Brother, sister, we we'll pray for you. Go. Okay? That's the best way to escape. But it is very, very important for us. Of course, you and I cannot meet everyone's need. But there is somebody's need whom we can meet. That could be even, and I'm not talking about physical needs alone. There are emotional needs. There are mental needs. There are spiritual needs. You know, as Christians, you and I must constantly look for opportunities. Not necessarily only to poor people. You know, even in our congregation. Or there may be Filipinos here who are very old, may not be able to come to the church. These days. And all that they want is that they need somebody to talk to. So when I say giving the needs, it's not just giving money or getting food. There are many different kinds of needs. You know, even within the body of Christ, there are people who feel not accepted very well. How do we make them feel welcome? How do we make them feel accepted? You know? So we you and I must constantly look for opportunities so that we can meet the needs of somebody in one way or the other. That is faith working out. You know, so it is easy to declare, God will do this for you, God will do that for you. But demonstrating that truth in our life, that faith that we have, is very, very important. So the first lesson is this. Faith that is declared but not demonstrated can never be a saving thing. The second thing is that faith that is received, please remember, faith also is given as one of the gifts from God. If you and I are able to uh, have that faith, it is not that something we have done. God has been so gracious, He has given us that gift. He has opened our eyes so that we could see that He is the Lord and He is the Savior. So that you and I could put our trust in Him. You know, I know some of you from um, the Catholic backgrounds. Uh, I know one day God opened your eyes. Even today, you see hundreds of people, even in this campus, they are very sincere. They are religiously going. But still, they need our prayer. You know. So, it is faith that is received, but not related on our daily life. You know, that cannot be a sustaining thing. If you want your faith to sustain you, the one thing that you and I need to do is that whatever we believe as faith, whatever we think is our faith in God, that has to be related on our daily basis, in our day-to-day -day activities. You know? Now, Norma said, because visa didn't come, Resident God is not a thing or whatever it is they do. That's a real situation. But in other situations, because I know normal a little better, so I can take it as an example, I hope you won't mind. 
But she herself said, I'm anxious. I'm a solution seeker. Correct? But she said, I learned to wait. What, what the word of God says, the faith is that wait patiently for the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. Don't be anxious. Don't get fed up. Don't be running from pillar to post. You are having difficult time. Okay, be still. Why? Is it possible? Lord, if I sit quiet, what will happen to my listening God? Who will talk to my visa people? How will I go? I didn't go home for three days, three years. How will I? You know, this natural. But if you are a Christian, as she led me there, that has to be related to a situation like that. Yes, God has his own plan. God has his own way of working. You and I do not know. Just because we don't see things happening in the way we want, it does not mean to say that God is not working. God has his own way of working. Definitely is working. You know? So, if you want your faith, if I want my faith to be a sustaining one, then it has to be related. Receiving the faith is not enough. Imagine, if, if someone gives me thousand riyals today, you know, I don't spend it, I don't give it to anybody, I keep it safely somewhere. Is that any use? Is that any use? They are real. If you don't use riyals, the currencies, they are mere papers mean. Correct? Faith, if you receive it, but you are not relating to your life situation because human life is full of turns and twists. It is not always the same. That what difference faith makes to the Christians is that, as, as the Apostle Paul says, don't be anxious about anything. But in everything, you come to this God by prayer and thanksgiving. Let your supplication be made known unto God, and you will experience not only the peace, you will also experience God's intervention. It's not easy. I know few people here have not gone home for three years, waiting to see the family. How painful it is. I mean, I can understand. I'm just here away from the family only for, in spite of the fact that I have my wife with me here. Even if I have extended family, we didn't see it only three months, but we already started missing it. But where is your own family? People like Brother Edgar, normal, your own family. I mean, it's, it's painful. It's not easy. But the faith that you have will sustain it in this most difficult situation. You know, that is why here he is using demons as an example. If you look at verse 19, you believe that there is one God. All of us believe that there is one God. And he says that you do well, that's all. But then even the demons believe and tremble. Why did he use this demons as an example? Because demons also know that there is only one God, like you and me. And demons know that Jesus Christ is God. And demons submit themselves to the power of God. That is why I don't know if you have experienced as a pastor a couple of occasions I there when people pray, demon possess people. Suddenly they pray, and then you have you know that you don't have any power and that you pray in the name of Christ. And, and the moment you mention, the moment you mention the name of Christ, the way they are disturbed, the way they scream, you would wonder, what is in that name? You know? What is in that name? And I remember one of my classmates' mother, often she used to get, that time I was not even a believer. I, I, I go to church carrying the Bible. But the moment I walk at that point of time into their house with, with the scripture, with, with this Bible in my hand, Lady used to be so angry with me. I was not even a believer, but carrying the word of God. She said, Ask him to get up. You know? So demons know that and they suffer. But what is the point James is making? After knowing all these truths, James says, Demons are still demons. So he says, if you know all these truths, and if you are still the same person, no change in you, you may know the truth, but you have not changed, you have not been transformed. He 
He said, what is it used for? He said, what is it used for? So the truth of God's word, if they don't affect the way I think, the world is after money, right? They will do anything to accumulate. Because for them money is everything. Okay, it's just here. I am also running out of money. I know the truth. But I am like that even. Correct? And I differentiate people. I don't have regard for people genuinely. I know the truth. The Bible says love the people. But I don't have genuine regard. I am like that even. Correct? There are so many things that you and I know. Because why they are demons, after knowing the truth, they never allow the truth to change their character. And it is possible for you and me also. We can go from Genesis to Revelation, but still we can remain the same. That danger is there. Just because we know the scripture, let us not take it for granted. We are born again. As we read in 5, 2 Corinthians 5 17, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. If you and I cannot say, of course, that new creation cannot take place overnight, it takes its own time. But I know for sure, I am much better than what I was last year. You know, I am reflecting the love of Christ much better way than what I did last year. I am slowly moving towards that. None of you, you know that the goal for Christian life is to be like Christ. And you and I cannot become like Christ overnight. It is a process. But you and I will know. Nobody else can judge. I know for sure whether I have grown to be like him. Whether I am sincerely trying or not. Only I know. So, but after knowing the truth, if I do not allow those truths to transform my understanding, Transform my priorities, transform my personality. I am like those demons. I will say yesterday, one God, my God is powerful, He is almighty. I will do all these things I will say, but I will continue to be this. Why? Because I only received the faith, I am not related. Like many of us call this thing. I always tell this challenge to anyone whom I want to share. Now, in case if I ask you this question, in which way you can say you are a different person from non Christian? What, what can you say? Someone comes to us, I am asking you the question. Now, you claim to be a person, Christian, born again person. Now, in what way are you different from a non Christian? What you don't do, which a, which a non Christian do, tell me one thing. What what can we say to you? Can we say I don't tell lies at all? Like non Christians we do. Can we say, I don't talk bad about the person when he is not there? Can we say, we also do. Tell me, take it as a homework. Go home and see, I claim to be a Christian. What is the one difference between me and between someone who does not know the Lord? Let's take it, let's do this exercise at home. So, if you and I think the same way like non Christian, if you and I do the same way like a non Christian, then what is the difference? Only the place of worship is different. They go to temples, they go to mosques, they come to church. That is what it is. So when we claim to have faith, that has to be related on a daily basis. Otherwise, no point when you people have got absolutely no point. You know, there was a man who acted as a demon. And he was in a hurry, in the demon costume, he was driving his car. Suddenly, the car come, car stopped. Just looked around, there was a church close by. By the side, he was going on. 
Remember, he was in demons hospital. So he did not even go to the church to get some help to get the house started. So, so he entered into the Bible study group with the demon costume. Suddenly one person started screaming, Ayo, please don't do anything. I've been part of this church for many years, but I am with you always. You know, I am your friend. Please don't do anything to me. Imagine if someone walks around with you, but the devil comes here. How many of us will say, Praise the Lord, or will we say this? Don't do anything to me, how about coming to the church? Edgar say, Brother Edgar would say, Oh, I'm playing guitar, but I'm not afraid. Brother Edgar, sorry for me. Please forgive me, right? No, let's be practical. You know, just because we are in the, in the church, let's not act as spiritual. But let us examine ourselves. You know, that is what God has given us precious gift this way. But unless and until we relate it on a daily situation, you know. Like for instance, normal voice is really. Now let me tell you, it's not only you normal. Probably you know. My niece is very exposed on twice because my the boy who's going to marry my niece is in Kuwait. He is not able to get his visa renewed. His wedding was fixed in January 8th. Then February 14th, they wanted to get married on Valentine's Day. That was gone. Today was to be the wedding. We booked the ticket and done twice, we cancelled it. They, he didn't understand the reason for the delay. My niece is frustrated, both the families are frustrated, he is frustrated. Now, this is the situation. Even he frustrated because twice we cancelled the ticket. We have to pay, we are on. And moreover, why there is delay? It is possible just because I am a pastor, I cannot say that no, no, I am at peace, I am not stressed out. I am not frustrated. If I say that, it is a lie. It is a lie. I am frustrated as well. Otherwise, probably the wedding reception would have been going on now, exactly today. It's not easy. But then, these are the opportunities for me to relate my life. Okay, if God delays, does He take pleasure in delaying me? No. He has a purpose. I may not understand. I may not understand everything that God does in my life. So what is the best thing that I can do? Trust Him. Trust Him. That is all we can do and I can do. Because He knows the best. That is why in Roman 8, 28 we see, in everything, God causes us to work together for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Correct? In everything God causes us. When, when he said, underline everything, we may not understand why there is delay, but God in his sovereign wisdom knows. In case if he wanted to teach normal to wait patiently for it, this is the only way. He will push you to the wall, against the wall, and then he, just before going, he will give you the reason. But he will teach you by then the lesson. You know. So God's ways are mysterious. But it is worth trusting the way he works. You know, so it is important, it is important because if you and I, because our faith can be poisoned by many superstitions, fear, anxiety, grumbling, jealousy, faith can be poisoned by all these negative emotions. Correct? But if our faith doesn't have transforming power on, our, on us, we are still demons. That's why James wanted to kind of uh, get the attention of his readers. So he said, you are also demon. You believe, but you are not changed. Demons also believe, they are not changed. So you are demons are, you know, I'm sure. When the Jerusalem people read this letter, oh, you are calling me demon, the author. Now I saw many of your eyebrows went down. You know, so that is the challenge for us. So there is no point in declaring the way it works. No point. We have to demonstrate. As Christians, you and I look for opportunities to serve people. If the people are in need, you know, be open. The second thing is that we receive our way, but that has to be the lead. 
that has to be related, related on a daily situation. How do I talk? Because the Bible says, words have power. The way you speak, you can make a person, you can break a person. Words have power for death and life. How do we speak? Because every word that proceeds from our mouth has power, you know, to give life to a person or to kill that person. How do we speak? How do we speak? If you and I claim that we are believers, I have faith in God, then the way I speak must show that. Okay? And the way I relate, I've come across it. In my past ministry, I've been serving the Lord for more than 20, 22 years. I've come across many who would pray to Christians. Oh, they will come to church, they will do all sorts of things. But I know they will have no regard for their lives. I'm telling you today, if I do not regard my wife, if I'm not the kind of husband that God wants me to be, God will say, get lost. I don't want your preaching. Because if I'm not a good husband, I cannot be a good servant of God. Because God has priorities. You and I cannot fool God. Many of Christians we think. This Christianity is confined to the church wall. That is why we act so much when we enter. We are very different outside. But God sees both. God sees both. If you are not the same person outside that you are inside the church, God is not pleased. With you. God is certainly not pleased. With you. Doesn't care for you, doesn't care for the children. 
He doesn't provide for the children. He is lazy around. He doesn't work. How could you relate that? But every other time, every five minutes, he will come and tell you, I love you. You are happy with that works or you want him to do something. Shall I? So it is easy to express faith in words. But exercising it will. But that's what James wants. That's why he said, faith without work is dead. Don't talk about it. Is. You know? Because you see that whenever there is a lightning, there will be a thunder. Correct? Lightning causes thunder, thunder causes one causes the other, and faith and works are like that. Faith is causing works, and work is causing faith. We are not saved by faith. I'm sorry, we are not saved by works, we are saved by faith. But if you and I say, I am a saved man, I am a born again man, then Ephesians 2 10 it says, You and I are created for good works. We are created for good works. And how far we do it? If this is true about every Christian, why there are so much of problems in churches today? Irrespective of the country that you go, the churches there are plenty of problems. Correct? I'm a counselor basically. People don't understand that there will be two brothers who have not spoken to each other for small problems for years together. They will come to the worst same church, they will lift their hands, they will lift their legs, everything they will do. As if God is going to please the people that way you worship. You know, you say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. But both of them have not spoken for years there. They are thinking very smart. They are thinking very smart. But God cannot be lost. God is not interested in what you declare. God saying that. If you believe my words, then you show sure? it. That tree is known by its fruits. Correct? That is why today there is so much of an emphasis on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Because it's easy. Gifts of the Holy Spirit preach it. And what I'm doing is the most easiest thing. If you want to know who I am, ask my wife, she will tell you. Speaking in tongues is much easier. But the fruit of the Spirit love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, self that is difficult. So, what happened today? Preachers don't speak about spiritual fruit. Fruit of the Spirit, no. Only gifts of the Spirit, which is attractive to lot of people. It's easy to speak in tongues, but it's difficult to love the way Christ loves you. It's difficult to love others the way Christ loves me. So what happened? I don't talk about fruit of the Spirit. Let me talk about only gifts of the Spirit. People are happy. I am happy. But our church is not like that. You and I are not. We are here to examine ourselves. We are here to test ourselves. We may be handful. We may be handful, but that's okay. That's okay. We will provoke one another. We will encourage one another. We will rebuke one another. Because when you come into this, you hold yourself accountable as brothers and sisters. You know, this is a serious business. Being a Christian is a serious business. So you come here to learn. And I even when you find something, your brother or sister here, you, you speak to them in love because none of us are perfect. All of us are struggling. But we are here to uphold one another, to encourage one another, to pray for one another, to learn from one another. That is very, very important, my dear people of God. You know, we are all coming from different backgrounds. I am sure you all may be from the same country, but you are all coming from still different backgrounds. Our each family is a separate unit coming from different backgrounds, right? I'm, I'm married for more than 30 years, but I still don't know my wife. That is a kind of thing. Because my wife comes from a different background altogether. So we are all different. But how do we accept one another? You know? So it is very, very important for us to understand. That is why 
You know, first John chapter 3, verse 13 and 17 and 18, he said, Be a children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. It is easy to love with words. You know? So, my dear people of God, this is what I would like to share with you this evening. You know, it's very, very important. Because today, there's a lot of things. You know, everywhere you see the preaching is, you must have more faith. My question is, for what? You must have more faith, more faith, more faith, and do what? It's my question. It is just for us to scream, for us to say something wrong. It has to be resulted in changing our needs. When somebody looks at me and says, Hey, you are not the same, you have changed the law. Then I know my God is pleased. You know, that is the, that is real salvation. Sometimes for years together you can come to the church, listen to the word of God, you can go back and still remain the same. Do you think that it's not possible? It is possible. But how far you and I are longing to allow the word of God that we hear to transform us, to change us? Do we desire a change in us? Or you and I say, I'm quite happy with myself, why should I change? Because that is why the faith is given to us, not for us to remain the same. This faith is a key factor so that you and I will grow more to be like Jesus Christ. You know, it's, it's very, very important for us because that is why he is using Abraham and Rehab. Abraham is a Jewish man, Rehab represents a Gentile woman. But yet, look at the way both of them exercise their faith. And can you imagine God using a prostitute? Can you understand that love? I feel like crying whenever I feel like this. You know, she's appearing in the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. In case, if you and I have to draw a family tree, whoever is in good position, we would like to show them. Correct? If in case, if any prisoner in our family, hmm? any murderer in our family, you think that we would like to show them in our family today? No. Beautifully we will avoid them. But look at the genealogy of Jesus Christ in as this prostitute. Now you understand what a privilege to be Christian. I don't know. When I think of what God wants me to be, I don't think that I'm even one person is complete. It's a long way to go. You know, it's, it's amazing. But she believed, in spite of being a immoral woman, she believed what God said about the promised land. That is why she risked her life by protecting spies. The spies sent by God to explore the land. If they had to come to know, they would have finished the law. She risked her life because she believed God is going to give the promised land. She had it. And both was pleased in God's sight. As much as God liked what Abraham did, he liked what they have did. You know? I always know that. If I was not a married person, I would have dedicated my life to serve the prostitutes. That was my desire. You know, if, if you look at yesterday, I was watching the way girls were trafficked into this industry. Be it states or be it Philippines, be it Nepal, anywhere. The stories, heartbreaking stories. As a church, what do we do? You know, we sit and condemn them because we are all saints, they are sinners. That is what they said when Jesus Christ forgave that prostitute woman and said, Don't sin anymore. All sorts of things were said about it. But my dear of God is very, very important because there has to be a relationship with what we believe and how we behave. It's, there has to be a relationship. And
and between our words and between our works, there has to be a relationship. Now, all of you are working elsewhere. But if people do not see the difference in the way you work in your workplace,
wants us to live supernaturally. Because he has given us the gift of faith. So he says that don't just simply declare your faith, demonstrate. Okay. He says don't just simply receive it and give it, relate it on a daily basis. Don't just express faith in words, exercise it in deeds. Then your faith will be a saving faith, sustaining faith, and securing. Let us examine God bless.